we're going to get ready for a special moment of um, inspiration and devotion as um, Elder Vladimir Krupski will be leading and he is the executive secretary of the Euro-Asia division of the General Conference and he has had uh, a long time of service in European, in, this, in, in, in Europe. He has received, of course, his Master of Science in Administration from Andrews University and um, has had an emphasis in international development for that master's. And he's been working in the church for nearly 30 years in several capacities. He's an ordained minister um, in the Ukrainian Union and has pastored several churches in that union. He's also been the president of the Southern Conference in, in the Union, and uh, since 2010, then, he has been serving as the Executive Secretary of the Euro-Asia Division. And he also has a very large passion for ministry and for the uh, role that health ministries play as the right arm of the gospel. He's a motivational speaker, and um, we are thrilled to have him here share with us the message this morning. So we will be praying that God will continue to bless him as he shares, and let's give, give a warm welcome to Elder Krupski as he leads us this morning to the altar of God. Thank you. Good morning, brothers and sisters. How are you today? Are you wake up happy? It's true. I would like to keep your happiness after my sermon. Because it's, of course, for all delegations from Euro-Asia Division, more convenient to listen myself by Russian language. But anyway, I try to do the best with you this morning. Dear delegates, the first European Health Conference, peace and grace be unto you, and blessing our Lord Jesus Christ. It is my privilege to, to be here and study God's Word with you this morning. Praise the Lord for this opportunity for health professionals and otherwise health-minded people to gather together for two reasons. First of all, to share basic Adventist thought with each other, and secondly, to see how we could make a better use for the Adventist health message, both for our neighbors and for ourselves. I am not a medical professional and I don't have any degree in this area, but I am a pastor and a Christian have strong belief in this health message which Seventh-day Adventist, Adventist, Adventist Church has been proclaiming. I represent the church administrators, but I would like to preach this morning just only as a person, just only as a pastor, with a serious desire for the next medical conference to have enough representative from the pastoral side for, the, for this, this kind of medical conference. Because we as a church, we are not just only society, medical society, who, uh, which get together to have some and receive some extra knowledge of the new method, but we as a church, we are the Christ body. And I have this desire in my heart. Maybe it will be interesting for you to know my personal background and the reason why for my confidence in the health message. I belong to a generation of Adventists which was born and they grew up during the time when our church in the former Soviet USSR was divided. You may ask, what does it mean, divided? It's very simple. As Paul mentioned in the, his letter to Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 1.12, I am Paul, I am Apollos, I am of Cephas, or I am of Christ, since 19. 60 till 1981. We had have div different leaders who not recognize each other and make separate weight preaching gospel and so often they preach sins each other. During that time 
in the USSR on, the, uh, on one of the, on this group, translated the Spirit of Prophecy book, Council of Diet and Food. And with it, they present the health message as a site of righteousness. As a site of righteousness. And most of the pastors and the church members rejected the health message because of that reason. And many of them are still waiting for a special light from heaven to embrace it. And when we started preaching the gospel after perestroika, you, you, I think you heard this, this word, Health Expo became as a part of our evangelistic efforts, but not a part of our personal Christian experience and are convinced. We fully relied in medical professionals or, or in the realm of our health. Health ministry department was endowed with uh, will all responsibility to the health part. New gener generation of our pastors after perestroika did not receive strong heritage from the previous generation of pastors to practice and promote our health, health message with the spirit of prophecy, is so clean about. This is where I'm coming, fr I'm coming from. I would like to remind ourselves that Seventh-day Adventists have had special interest in health, not only for purpose of living longer and healthier life, but also because the health message was integrated in their theological understanding. This morning I would like to study with you the link between our health message and Christ's Gospel Commission. As Jesus was parting with his disciples, he planned on working with them for the salvation of all people, and he said, All authority has been given to me in heaven and, the, and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to absorb all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end, to the age. Matthew 28, 18 to 20. As Seventh-day Adventist Christians, we believe that the gospel is the only answer to our world's needs. As we see the, the decline of moral principle, corruption, natural disasters, and disease plaging our world, we know that the gospel the, the answer, has the answer to all of these problems. But the problems of modern Christianity lies into, in too much theory and too little practice. How can our health message help us solve this problem? How did it help Jesus to silence opposition and to gain people for the kingdom of heaven? I would like to point out three main principles that tie our Adventist health message to the Gospel Commission. First of all, love without reserve. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the Gospel of kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people, Matthew 10:35. Jesus faced the problems that we have today. He lived in the culture and time when his message was largely unappreciated. Even worse than today, the, at, at, at that time, you could be stoned to death for introducing, introducing new views about God. But people saw Jesus. Jesus' conduct and understood his love and sincere care for them. Jesus was love embodied. He was like a spring of health and life everywhere he went. It was the essence of his soul to love people and to them and do them good. He taught his disciples the same as we read in Matthew chapter 10 verse 1 through 8. And when he had called his 12 disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. These 12 Jesus 
sent out and commanded them, saying, Do not go into the way of the Gentiles, and do not enter a city of Samaritans, but go rather to the lost ships, ship of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is, a hand, is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, rise the dead, the dead, cast out demons, freely you are received, freely give. In the ministry of healing, this great book about heavenly healing art, we read, the world needs today what it needed 1900 years ago. Today we can say 20 hundred, hundred today. A revelation of Christ, a great work of reform is demanded, and it is only through the grace of Christ that the work of physical, mental, and spiritual restoration can be accomplished. Nothing but God's love can make a way to human hearts. Those who were touched by Jesus' love were changed. They did not join the mob against Christ and the, t and, and the time of his trail and crucifixion. We read in the story of redemption. A great multitude followed the Savior to Calvary, many mocking and reading, but some were weeping and rec recounting his praise. Those whom he healed from various infirmities and those whom he had raised from the dead declared his marvelous works, work, works with earnest voice and demanded to know that Jesus had done that they should be treated as a malefactor. Even Christ's disciples fled for their li lives. They were not ready to risk their lives for Christ. Can you imagine the pressure they were under? But God's love manifested in Jesus' love moved those that had been healed and they stood in his sight. What a love! Those healed and raised from the dead experienced God's love and they, they could not betray it. They could not join the mob against Christ. We, as, we, as we've been praying for worldwide, worldwide revival and reformation for the past several years, I understand more clearly that this simple formula is what I need today also. We need the heavenly gift that, we cha that, that we will change us from outside, uh, inside out. We need the Holy Spirit to imbue us with true, unselfish love for the people around us. That love that Jesus had not only for those who are prom promising converts, but also for those who are not interested in religious things today. Secondly, second principle, Christ, the true healer of body and the soul. Of course, as Seventh-day Adventists, we would like people not only to get well physically, but to experience spiritual healing as well. Jesus said, said in Matthew 20, 16, 26, For what profit is it to a man if if he gains the whole world and lost his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? We can paraphrase these words. What, for what profit will physical health bring if a person dies in rebellion against Lord, against God? As Seventh-day Adventist, we always understood that this life is not all what we have. And we hope that the health service that we provide in various ways, from local church cooking class and health club to professional health center and hospital service, will point people to God and they will experience spiritual healing. Jesus himself, himself did that. He said to the healed blind man, Do you believe in the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord? that I must, believe, I must believe in him. And Jesus said to him, You have both seen him, and it is he who has spoken with you. Then he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. What a wonderful example to follow. What a def defined method which, which to, with, with which to open God's love, to invite people to come to our Heavenly Father. 
We read in the ministry of healing, Christ method alone will give, will, will give true success in reaching the people. The Savior mingled with men as one who desired their good. He showed his sympathy to them, ministered to their needs, and won their confidence. Then he bade them follow me. We need to pray for the revival of true love in our hearts. God's word is very defined, accompanied by the power of persuasion, the power of prayer, the power of love of God. This work will not, cannot be without fruit. This is a certain counsel that is very practical. On the same page of the ministry of healing, just above that, we will read, we see the following counsel. There is need of coming close to people by personal effort. If less time, we, uh, were, if less time were given to sermonizing, and more time were spent in personal ministry, great result would be seen. The poor are to be relieved, the sick cared for, the sorrowing and the betrayed comforted, the ignorant instructed, the inexperienced counseled. We are to weep with, this, with the whose that weep and rejoice with those that rejoice. Accompanied by the power of persuasion, the power of prayer, the power of love of God, this work will not, cannot be without fruit. God, God's words, word is sure. We will see a new Pentecost, a great revival and reformation will happen among the God's people, and many will flock to the church. The Holy Spirit is knocking in our hearts, waiting for acceptance. The <clears throat> He wants to move us to personal ministry, to the, people around, to the people around us, as well as to organized efforts to the establishing a health institution. Let us present Jesus in all our efforts to relieve suffering and sickness, but let's do it in the winsome, not imposing manner. In our church and health institution, people observe us. There was a patient... Uh, <coughs> Uh, there was a patient uh, who used to occupy a high military position in one of our health centers in Ukraine. He was a relied military general responsible for nuclear dis dis disarmament of, of the country in the 90s. He came to our lifestyle health center for a 10 days program and he attended Sabbath worship in the local chapel for the first time in his life. During the Sabbath school, in the special class for the guest, where everyone could ask questions, he made a comment about one of his observations. He was watching how local workers harvested potatoes in the field nearby, the, the, uh, nearby and they were bringing big potato bags in the storage right behind the health center. This man's window faced the sin. He sat at the, windows and, and, uh, at the window without being seen, and he listened to young man conversation. We need to remember, always, we need to remember that our faith will be tested, tested from the people who who beside us. This man had worked among military men for all his life. He's, he's now, he knows very well what's means the man's language and he wanted to hear for he wanted to hear how this adventist talked between each other he sat there and listened as he's sharing this story in the sabbath school class the teacher began began to worry began to worry a little bit what did he hear what testimony are a young adventist man bore he heard nothing of what he expected. He was amazed, young man, unloading potato bags, and, <clears throat> and, prof and profound vocabulary was heard. People watch us. They want to see something real. They observe not only how doctors and medical professionals care for them, but also how they care for each other. This man was impressed with everything he saw. Truly, 
the word needed today, what is needed 20 hundred years ago, a revelation of Christ. Revelation of Christ through our life. Pastors, church members, medical professionals, everyone who belong to this church. Oh, how is true is today? How we need revival and information for that to happen more consistently. But Adventist Health message is not only for our friends outside of our large church family. The health message has a very particular purpose for seven days Adventist as well. Our own health habits share, shape our characters. As God's remnant people, we should remember our high calling. We as Seventh-day Adventists understand our special mission in preparing the way for the second coming of the Lord. There are special characteristics of God's rem remnant people in the last day. They are to exalt God's moral law in the spirit of love and those to prepare the world to the great ad uh, advent. But in our special mission, we are to live the law by God's power, not merely talk the law. The Apostle Paul exalted the uh, Christian in Rome. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your responsible, responsible service, Romans 12, 1. As we encourage people to follow God's law in health, of health, we ourselves should do it also. The Bible teaches, teaches the holistic nature of man and woman. We understand that human beings do, do not have immor immortal soul, but but it is in our bodies where we develop our spiritual, intellectual, emo uh, emotional, and physical power. This is a profound truth that had been relieved to the Adventist pioneers. We understand that there is a direct link between the physical and spiritual areas in our lives. The brain's nerves, which communicate with the entire system, are not are the only medium through the which heaven can communicate to man and affect his immost life. Whatever disturbs the circulation of the electric currents in the nervous system, less, lessness the strength of the vital powers, and the result as a deadening of the sensi sensibility of the mind. Testimony volume second. We cannot afford to have our brain powers deteriorate. deteriorate. The love, of, love to God is a com, uh, constructing us to do our best in, uh, in preserving our health for the useful life of service to others. Not merely to live 8 to, uh, to 10 years longer. We are to prepare ourselves and others to translations. Those health messages it's God's help is sanctification process. Help in the sanctification process. We can expect true revival and reformation without, we cannot expect true revival and reformation without living up to the high, to the light which we received. In order to be fitted for translation, the people of God must know themselves. They must understand in regard to their own physical frames that they may be able with the psalmist to exclaim, I will prize thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. They should always have the uh, appetite to sub uh, subject and on the moral and intellectual organs. The body should be servant to the mind and not the mind to the body. And in conclusion, so we see that the three is, is uh, there is a threefold linked lynch between the health message and the gospel. The health message helps us to communicate God's love in a tangible way. It provides a means of overcoming prejudice against our spiritual message. It has a special place in our preparation for the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, we are to feel our responsibility to promote health lifestyle as a preventive of disease. Nothing else should be a substitute to obedience to God's law in health. 
Let us combine our forces as pastors and ministry in Christ and the Christ-like ministry. God gives us many opportunities to work together for the restoration of soul and body. Especially in the Euro Asia division, doors are open to establish the health ministry like Lifestyle Health Center, clinics, health food stores, health food production, vegetarian, vegetarian cafes, and other institutions. Really, even speaking in a business wise sense, this niche, niche is still empty. Yes, some efforts have been made in these lines, but it's, it's, it is not enough. There is a great need to educate lay, lay people in this work. We need to teach young people and call them to medical missionary work. I'd like to share a little bit more for my background. One day, years ago, we had a pastoral meeting in the local conference, and we sincerely praying for ourselves, for our ministry, and for success of preaching the gospel. But the, before that, before this meeting, a few months before, we had had this serious discussion with health department director about for whom belong responsibility about proclaiming health message which Ad Seventh-day Adventist Church have. During that prayer time, I received a call from God which very clearly communicated to my mind and my soul. Why did you decide that this message pertains to the health department or medical professional and not to you and your brother's pastors. At that time, Lord helped me to say, yes, I believe it. I will follow you, your will. For this reason, brothers and sisters, I'm here. And I have privilege to tell you a few words. And I pray, my God, about next few years, near future, unite our possibility, our knowledges which the church have today and combine these possibilities for one way to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this helps people to understand more this heavenly love. And it's helped us as a church community to have not only the good health, but also be, be very healthy spirituality. And, re and go through the revival and reformation. May God bless you. Amen.